Hey guys, Pie Guy Rules here, and I wanted to talk about Finding Dory a little bit because I finally got around to seeing it. It's been like, what, a year since the movie came out? Um, it did take me that long. I didn't go to see it in the theater, and you know, it's been on Netflix for a while, but I, I'm the type of person, and if you've, if you've heard some of my videos, you might know this, but I don't watch that many movies. I watch a lot of TV, I play a lot of video games. I don't actually watch that many movies. Um, I typically go to the theater a few times, and, you know, when something comes out on uh, Netflix or something that I really want to see, I'll see it eventually. But I'm not the type to kind of, like, rush out and see it. Um, I'd always intended on seeing it, but it, it just, it, it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't that high a priority to me. Um, but I decided to do this little vlog because I did finally see it, and also, uh, Finding Nemo is my favorite Pixar film. Uh, and beyond that, it's one of my favorite films of all time, animated or non-animated. I think it is just a real masterwork of cinema with uh, a really, really, really good narrative, uh, strong themes, memorable characters, beautiful location. I, I, th I think it really just kind of has the whole package and is everything that a film really should have. Um, but uh, so, so yeah, so since I'm such a big fan of Finding Nemo, uh, I thought it'd be fun to talk just a little bit about Finding Dory. Uh, so about a year ago, I did a, a modern Pixar discussion with Eye of Saul, and in it, it, it was right before Finding Dory was to come out, and I believe we mentioned it a little bit, and I had kind of said that I think that the movie, from the trailers, it looks like it's going to be just kind of a safe sequel that kind of retreads a lot of the same points that the first movie had, um, but isn't necessarily bad, but is just kind of... You know, it's 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 not it doesn't bring anything new to the table artistically. So there's not really much of an artistic justification for it, but you know, it still looks like it's going to be fun and enjoyable. And basically, I think I was I, I think I nailed it. Um, I think that that is exactly what this movie is. It is a safe sequel. It's it's a sequel that does not really it 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 follows up on the same themes that the first movie did. Uh, it has kind of the same elements of the first movie, uh, you know, m memorable side characters that help out the protagonists. Um, it has the one of the characters getting abducted and ending up on uh, on land in some sort of facility that the other characters kind of have to have to rescue her from, although they don't actually end up rescuing her. Um, but uh, but but you know, it kind of has that format. It has the format of you follow both um, Nemo and Marlin, and then you also follow Dory separately, kind of like how you followed Nemo and, Se and Marlin Dory separately. It, it follows a lot of the same structure as the first film, and I would say that it's just different enough that it doesn't feel like... It, it, it's not, like, awful. It's not like, oh, I'm watching the same exact movie again. They do mix up certain things. It's, it's you know, it's not a beat-for-beat repeat uh but it is similar enough that i would say that it it doesn't it, it doesn't infuse it with anything new it, we're, we're not talking about uh like a sequel that really kind of takes what the first movie does and and just ups the ante and makes it bigger better and crazier i guess i guess a good example of that would probably be toy story 2 what toy story 2 did for toy story 1 even though even though when you get down to it i mean basically all three toy story movies kind of have the same plot vaguely of characters need to be rescued from somewhere which i guess is also the plot of finding nemo and finding dory but <laughs> um but yeah no uh, like a really good sequel kind of takes the themes of the first movie and pushes it harder um you know kind of advances the themes further or takes it in a completely new direction um but this movie doesn't really do that. It it hits the same exact points. It's it touches on the theme of you know letting go of your children. It touches on the theme of um, fa the importance of family. It, it it touches on just a lot of the same points. Uh, you know the importance in trusting other people. You know strangers and all that. It, it it's you know it hits the same points. So you know it it, it is it, like artistically. And if I were to be a super cinema snob film snob, um, you know, I would say, well, actually, this movie does nothing. You accomplish nothing by watching it. You might as well just watch Finding Nemo twice. Um, you know, and, and I don't think that's technically wrong from an artistic standpoint, but from a general viewing audience enjoyment perspective, it's a fun movie. 
You know, it had it had laughs. Uh, it has it, it brings back a few of the older characters, but does a good job of introducing us to new ones. Uh, you know, like the the two whales, um, as well as uh, you know Dory's parents and um, the, the Ed O'Neill as the uh, Septipus. You know, and and those characters are all they're all memorable and stuff, but it, they're not. I don't think they're as iconic as the first movie's side characters and stuff like that. And and that's just kind of like the nature of the beast in that I think that Finding Dory is ultimately Finding Nemo again, but like a little worse. Not not awful, but just it it doesn't... It uh, Not only is it not the first one to get there, or like, you know, comparing them, Finding Nemo was the first one, um, but it, it, I just don't think it hits these points as hard as Finding Nemo does, and I don't think it's as emotionally there i mean it it gets emotional and and there are you know there are some really good scenes and really good parts of the movie but i i guess ultimately it's like if i would say that finding nemo is like a 9.5 or a 10 then i would probably put finding dory at maybe like a 7 which is like still good still an enjoyable film still something i would recommend but you know if you're looking for a masterpiece if you're looking for something that really takes what the first one d did and does it better or takes the series in a new direction this is not that movie this is the play it safe uh and and that's you know that's it is what it is really you know there's always there's the two approaches when it comes to a sequel you either you play it safe or you go for something crazy and if you go for something crazy you could get something really good that's better than the original, or you could get something that's awful and, and makes people not even want to watch the original anymore. You know, that this movie does not hurt anything. It, it doesn't, like, take Marlin and turn him into an unlikable character or, you know, turn Dory into just a joke or anything like that. It doesn't harm the original. Um, you know, and that's the benefit of playing it safe is that you're you're not going to have those elements. Uh, but, of course, the, the downside is that you're not going to reach anywhere near the... Um, artistic quality of what the first one did it, uh but by playing it safe so so yeah so that's my uh little little spiel about finding dory in relation to finding nemo uh as far as the film itself i think my my favorite part definitely is um kind of the the lowest point in the movie for dory right after she's um uh she's dropped back into the ocean where Marlon and Nemo are heading back on the truck and the the septopus is you know he just kind of scampered off he's trying to hide from the people and we get a first person perspective of Dory being in this glass being dropped and then flowing down a drainage pipe out into the ocean and being completely lost uh, I think that that scene like the the cinematography there the first person view um that that was that was probably like that, that was my favorite part of the movie just because it you really feel something there. You really like get that kind of guttural help helplessness uh, when you're a fish in this human world and your only more mode of transport, you're reliant on an octopus to wheel you around. And then when that's gone, you just, you kind of have to follow the water flow and you're swept away. Um, so I think that was really good part. The, the only thing uh, outside of it just kind of being safe, the only like real criticism I have of the movie, and, and maybe this is just me, is I did not like the climax. Uh, you know, towards the end, well, almost at the very end, you know, I like the part where Dory has to come up with a plan to rescue Marlon and Nemo, and they do that, but then, okay, Dory's left behind. Okay, so all that's fine. I don't like the octopus, the septopus, driving the truck. I, I just, I thought that that was just, just too far out there. Like, finding Nemo, and finding Dory even up to that point, it, it it sets rules for itself, but but st stuck to them. Okay, so like the rules of this universe are that fish are anthropomorph anthropomorphized. They can speak, they can do human-like things, but that's about as far as it goes. They don't have like, you know, cell phones. They don't have cars they drive around in undersea. Uh, you know, we're not talking a SpongeBob world. We're not talking about a goofy world. We're just talking about, you know, this is the real world, but if fish were, um, you know, were more human-like. Um, you know, in the first movie, I think the most like ridiculous thing that happens is that they ride in the pelican's mouth, and and that's about it. But but in the second one, just just having him drive this truck while while where he can't see, and Dory's guiding him around, and there's just this big trunk tr truck on the interstate, just kind of going like, how did he not crash? And and just 
I don't know, the, the silliness of it, uh, I, I felt was a bit out of place. I mean, I like the ridiculousness of just the truck crashing into the water with the slow motion and the Louis Armstrong, like that silliness I can get behind, but just the whole sequence of him in the truck, it, 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 it also, it didn't feel like thematically relevant, like the, um, you know, like, like the climax or, you know, some of the climaxes in Finding Nemo did, like the, towards the end of Finding Nemo where they have to escape from the net, that one thematically makes sense because it's a fisherman catching fish in the net and they have to use teamwork to escape, like it all ties together. Here it's like, um, yes, there is the theme of Dory and the Septopus relying on each other and using teamwork and stuff, um, but it, it just, I, I don't know, it, it's just too out there for me. Uh, per personally, I, I think it kind of bent the rules of the universe a little bit too far, made things a little bit too, like, weird, like, okay, so now he can drive, and, and they're not crashing into anyone, and, and all that sort of stuff, um, but yeah, but that, that's really my only complaint. Um, uh, another part of the movie that I really liked was the very beginning, like, how they, how they handled it, where, you know, you, okay, so you see Dory's little backstory with her and her parents, and then you kind of see her growing up and stuff, and it's like, okay, that's cool, but my favorite part is when she crashes into Marlin, uh, and they, they kind of give you just enough dialogue there to get you to feel, like, nostalgic for the first movie, and then they're like, okay, one year later. Um, I thought that that was handled particularly well. I like that they showed the meeting again, because that is, uh, you know, it's very important. Um, but I also, you know, and, and, you know, I like a lot of stuff about this movie that I liked about the first movie. I like that Marlin and Dory are not in a relationship. This is, this is a movie, just like Finding Nemo, where there is a male and a female lead, and they are not in a romantic relationship. There is no romance. That's good. Why can't we have movies where there's no romance? Why does every single movie have to have a romantic plot line? The answer is it doesn't, but for some reason Hollywood wants it. Um, you know, I, I like that. I like, you know, Dory is super likable here. Um, you know, I, I like what they did with Nemo's character. I like how they kind of made him a little bit snarky and a little bit uh, poking fun of his dad at his dad. I like what they did with Marlin in that um, he's still Marlin. It's not like, you know, after his adventure with Dory, he's just like a 180, like here, free range parenting, Nemo, do whatever you want. He's still, he's still protective, but you can see that he's kind of come, uh, uh, you know, a long way from where he was. So, um you know, he's, he's, there's a nice middle ground there. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little vlog thing. I, uh, I actually just got done moving into a new place, so I've kind of been busy, and I hope, I hope you enjoyed this little piece of content. It's just kind of filler content while I'm working on some bigger and more important things. So, uh, with that, Pagai Rules, out.